Kamal Hassan may have entered into a compromise, but he hasn't quite surrendered to the fringe elements he was held to ransom by. Less than four hours after Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jai Jai Lalita refuted all criticism, denying that she had no personal motive against Kamal Hassan, the actor too addressed the media. He's joining us live from Mumbai at this time, Kamal Hassan. You know, there's a cultural emergency all across the nation. Kamal Hassan is the one man who's fighting against it. And I want to tell our viewers tonight that you can call in live with your questions. We've got the superstar himself, deeply loved across India, not just in Tamil Nadu. He will take a few questions from you. You've seen him suffer, go through a lot of anguish over the last several hours. He will directly take questions from viewers watching our broadcast on headlines today. But I want to tell you first what happened through the day today. The actor maintained that it was not about Islam but politics. However, he thanked the chief minister and hoped that after the CM's interventions, text would be cleared for his film's release. Earlier in the day, Chief Minister Jailalita. I got from the Muslim community. It's unbelievable. They came and apologized to me as if it was their personal mistake. And what was most touching was a personal man came proudly wearing his hat. You could make out is that he is standing right in the middle of the protesting crowd and crying for me. Islam is not targeting me. Who is that Muslim or who could be the people who get angry? It's politics. It is politics. It's not religion. Islam never says that. Ask any learned Muslim. <coughs> it doesn't say go hunting. But people thought I was very angry, so in an emotional outburst, I said something about leaving the country. If this happens again, I would seriously think of leaving the country. I'm not threatening. I'm hurt. This is my place. You can never say about the country. I was Earlier in the day, the Chief Minister had minced no words to make it clear that she was against the release of Hassan's film as she couldn't take risks regarding law and order. Jailalita was extremely acerbic in her response that the sole responsibility of making the film and its expenditure was the producers and not the state. For the sake of the film, I've hawked this house to my moneylender who had shown great patience and now he, it's, it's nearly two months since he lost his patient and uh, that things get got postponed. He wanted some kind of visible safety for him and I have bequeathed all my properties that I own in Chennai and surroundings to him that in case he doesn't realize his money in a particular date he will take over this place. Now, there has also been a lot of talk. Mr. Kamala Hassan has said that he has pledged all his properties and he stands to lose everything if the film is not released. Now, Mr. Kamala Hassan is nearing 60, 58 years old, the responsible adult. What he has done is to take a calculated risk a calculated gamble. If he has taken a decision to produce a movie with a mega budget running to hundreds of crores and if he has pledged all his properties for the same, that is a conscious decision that he took. So how can the government be held responsible for that? One of India's most respected superstars, a champion for free speech, a man who's being hounded in his own nation and now feels so threatened that he's in, even contemplating leaving. Mr. Kamal Hassan joins us on this broadcast live from Mumbai. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamal Hassan, for joining us on Headlines today. And I want to begin this broadcast by telling you that me personally, our entire newsroom and every single one of our viewers, I'm sure, is fully with you all the way despite the noise that the fringe is making. And I want to also tell our viewers that there's a number up on your screen. You can call in live and speak to Kamal Hassan. He will answer your questions. I want to begin by asking you, Mr. Hassan, about the impact this controversy has had on you. The last 72 odd hours, are they the toughest 72 hours of your life? And did you ever think when you were making this movie that you ran the risk of running uh, into the ire 
of the fringe on the corners of our society. First, uh, let me thank you and all your peers and friends who gave me such support. Um, I'm, I'm, um, uh, I'm grateful to the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu and um, for being kind and coming to my help. And uh, uh, I've had m many moments, but each have different kind of pain. Uh, different color and uh, temperature. This was quite hot for me and quite hard for me. Not because there was money involved, as uh, the Honorable Chief Minister said, I am uh, an adult and I've taken this risk before. I'm, I'm a I'm trained uh, actor and I've been training with masters. I've worked with some of the greatest producers and uh, uh, some of them are dying in the industry and I do know that there is a risk factor but uh, uh, this came out from the blue because when you do the film you design it, you design it carefully I've been writing many films, I've done about 212 films it's a lot of uh, experience, a lot of mistakes and uh, so from there I have learned that uh, there are certain things I can do and certain things I shouldn't do. I don't gamble with my films. I invest in my films. And um, I work hard. I prep my film. I don't uh, talk to my astrologer. I talk to my technician. So there are different ways of approaching the film and I approached it in the all right uh, manner that I should as a filmmaker and then suddenly this happens and uh, it came out of the blue this film is designed to please Muslims I thought and it turned out to be something else yes it was painful what was painful for me is making my fans wait and uh, my exhibitors my distributors all of them uh, had invested it's not just a single man sitting on it it's a large industry and um, truly in the spirit of a person who's responsible for all of this the chief minister has come forward to help us all out of this trouble i'm sure there has been over the last many more, 48 hours uh, we've had some opportunity from various sectors to discuss this issue uh, with some this, people who uh, say action. that they've been offended by the film and the manner in which muslims have been stereotyped they but say it, it, uh, because my, of the fact I was very that they brother no home, they say that because somebody is wearing a cap years. because yeah. he says the quran before so, he goes out and attacks okay. therefore they feel that muslims are being stereotyped by your film sir i as a, a grown up adult was worried for my brother because he was sleepless i mean we, we are not used to this amount of uh, pressure coming from various directions but uh, i will have to apologize to all of them for putting them through this I mean, cinema is supposed to be uh, engrossing, entertaining, and uh, that's all I try Colin. to do. We've got Gautam calling in from Mumbai, and as I promised Mr. Kamal Hassan, this is an opportunity for people to call in and question you directly. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, Gautam, go on. Mr. Kamal Hassan is with us. You can ask him. Your question. I think we went Hi, off. Kamal. This is Quite Gautam simple. from Mumbai. My deep condolence for what has been happening with your movie, and we are deeply hurt as citizen of the country. But my general question to you would be that where, as a citizen, we are going, and are we a democracy or we are moving into an anarchy? That's a very relevant question uh, that's been asked by Gautam. I also want to play out at this time what Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Manish Tiwari said he wants to use this as an opportunity to now change the law. Let's listen to Manish Tiwari. There is a need to harmonize and reconcile the powers which are available to the central government and the powers which are available to the state government to see that the freedom of speech and expression is not unnecessarily or unreasonably restricted. It was felt that maybe the time has come 
to have a relook at the Cinematographic Act, and that's why I suggested to Secretary INB to constitute a committee to go into it in a holistic manner. And when you know that there is going to be violence in a certain situation in a certain place. It is the duty of the government to do whatever is possible. There has been some misleading information in the media that the state government doesn't have powers to ban a movie. Now, that is a total misconception. I would like to correct that. Mr. Kamal Hassan, our first viewer, Jai uh, Gautam from Mumbai, said that it seemed to him that over the last 72 hours, we did have the rule of law in our country, but there was anarchy. Because of the fact that the censor board has given the go ahead to your film and despite that it gets blocked by some fringe elements and the state government doesn't stand up for you, he says that he believes that there was anarchy. Is that the sense that you got as well, Ms. Das? I don't know about anarchy. Anarchy didn't happen because most of them were well behaved. A few stray incidents. Where um, we don't know where, where it happened in Ramnathapuram and a few places. There were stray incidences. Fortunately, uh, nobody was hurt. There was my fans got uh, agitated a bit, and the police had to re restrain them. That's all. I'm fortunate that it stopped with that. Anarchy is a big word to use, and uh, uh, probably that's what. Uh, the Chief Minister reiterated that she'd like to maintain the peace and order first before helping a conscious uh, business decision. And um, I think she has done the right thing. And above all, I'm very grateful to my fans who kept their cool. Bravo, my boys. Okay, we've got Touch. Arun calling in from Jaipur. He too has a question for Mr. Kamal Hassan. Arun. They've behaved. Arun, one of the questions that's cropped up Hi. again and again, Mr. Kamal Hassan, is whether you have a personal battle with Jai Jai Lalita. Three instances yeah. are being cited. Yeah. In 2003, there was a film called Sandiar, which was later renamed and became uh, Miru Mandi. Uh, it, you know, that film ran into trouble with Dalit organizations. Jai Lalita was in charge at that time. You were forced to shop, stop shooting. In 1992 as well, there was Thevar Magam. If I've got the pronunciation right, that again was a film which ran into a controversy with the Thevmar community because it glorified violence. That too happened when Jai Lalita was in charge. The question is, is there a personal battle with the Tamil Nadu chief minister, sir? Mm, no, because uh, it, during Viramandi, uh, it was first called Sandhir and there was this big trouble with that. And... Uh, she, in fact, helped me, had a discussion, called me and told me, why don't you change the title? Because that seems to be hurting people. And I, I changed it. And uh, so that's how it went. Then later on, I had a controversy with a film being called Mumbai Express. They said, you can't name a film Mumbai Express. It has to be in Tamil. So that time I refused because... I couldn't fully understand why we have to go into this, uh, I think. And then, then there was, I mean, there, there, for, there, was, there was a film called uh, Vasul Raja MBBS. It's uh, Munabai made into Tamil. And uh, the doctors were offended that Vasul and MBBS are put together. So I think uh, as if doctors don't charge at all. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been... Mean, going through this and you can't attach this to the chief minister whoever it is then okay we've got sumit calling in he has a question for mr kamal hassan sumit hello yes sumit yeah hi mr kamal hassan hello Please go on ask your question sumit just a little incident before i ask my question uh, mr kamal we all love you in new delhi and there's a small incident which i like to tell you i often travel to chennai and Whenever I sit in a, a taxi, I ask, because there's too much craze of Mr. Rajni Khan, I ask how is Mr. Rajni Khan. Then, nine out of ten people say, I follow Kamal Hassan. I follow Kamal Hassan. So, we all love you here also. My question to you, Mr. Kamal Hassan, is that what is your next step now when there is 
UP government coming up with all the bans and other government coming up with the bans. What is your next step we will be doing to make sure that we should open gift trains? No, I think, <laughs> I, I, Mr. Sumit, I thought you're a friend calling from Delhi. <laughs> you're, you're scaring me now. I don't think there's anything like that um, so far. Uh, I think the Honorable uh, Chief Minister of, of uh, UP said, we have no such intention. I was told, I didn't see the interview. We have no such intention. Let's see the film. And that's the attitude to be taken. Uh, I don't think there'll be anything offensive. Many states, some which have a lot of Muslims in them, Kerala, uh, Malabar area, Hyderabad, they've all seen the film and it's running packed houses there. I, and many Muslims have uh, liked the film. MS Rao is calling from Hyderabad. He has a question for Mr. Kamal Hassan. Hello. Yes, go on, uh, ask your question. Uh, yes, yes, I am MS Rao from uh, Andhra Pradesh. Ask your question, please. Yes, yes. I have seen the film. I, yeah. I have seen the film. Actually, actually, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I have seen the film. <coughs> yeah. Either this film is uh, pro, pro Islamic or uh, anti Islamic, yeah. but it is nowhere connected to India. What is your purpose of making this film? When you are Indian. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, but he has the right to make the film, Mr. Rao. You surely yes, can't take away film. his I'll right to I'll make whichever film he wants in whatever way he wants. But this yeah. is a question oh, that's been asked okay. again and uh, again, Mr. Kamal Hassan. Mr. Kamal Hassan, the question is about stereotyping Muslims. The fact that See, you know, we had some people in our show yesterday say each time they go plant a bomb, they recite from the Quran. It conveys an image that Muslims are being stereotyped by Kamal Hassan. No, it's it's quickly not seeing the film and saying reciting the Quran bomb. You you compressing, telescoping the film so tightly that you're putting scene number one, scene number three, scene number four, and four and a half in such close quarters that it sounds like it sounds bad. And Mr. Rao's question is: So you rather that I go and make a film about uh, Indralok and Chandralok? People have a lot of Telugu films, uh, Yamagola and that. Uh, that's not India. That's uh, Devlok. <laughs> a filmmaker can go anywhere, Mr. Rao, as long as he keeps you entertained. Okay, we've got Raghu Ram joining you, us. You rather that I go sing songs in Switzerland, which is also not about... <laughs> no, that's true. You have the right, okay. Mr. Kamala San, of making any film you wish. And no one can take that right away from you. I want to bring in Raghu Ram, who too has a question for you. Hello. Yes, go on. Yeah, this is uh, Raghuram Arav from Kakirala, Andhra Pradesh. Yes. And my question is, uh, uh, the, all over the world, yes. this, this is calling from Kakirala, Andhra Pradesh. And my question to you is, the Muslims and Ar Arabs are how old? Yes, all over the, the world. Proper powers like anything since uh, not a seen from 35 years. 35, 40 years. And uh, India has sympathized with them in... Uh, PLO or something, but they have not done anything concrete with the Muslims or Arabs. So, what is that, what is this Tamil Nadu is doing here uh, without doing any concrete work for these 34 years? This is my question. No, he's essentially making the point, Mr. Hassan, that there are people elsewhere no, as well understand. who've Did been you, watching the film. People have watched the film in Hyderabad, yeah. people have watched the film in Bangalore, it's playing all over in Did. Kerala. Why is it that only Tamil Nadu has a problem yeah. and nowhere else yeah. uh, do Muslims apparently have yes. this problem? What do you make of that? I don't know. I think uh, uh, my Tamil Nadu Muslim brothers uh, will have to uh, take a cue from the rest of uh, India. I even We had a lot of discussions. I mean, it's not that I treated them like... Uh, an, uh, a counterpart or a debating opposition. They came to my office, they spoke, they, we were smiling and they know that I'm a sympathizer. I'm a marked man for being uh, a Muslim sympathizer. So I really don't understand. I'm as perplexed as uh, my friend from Andhra. But now this cultural emergency is spreading. 
We saw the Uttar Pradesh government today announced that they too would not allow the film to be released. Are you concerned that this malaise is spreading from Tamil Nadu and afflicting other parts of our country too? No. No. It's actually uh, Singapore has opened up. I think Malaysia will open up. And uh, Pondicherry opened up even before Tamil Nadu. And I think the Honorable Chief Minister of UP has not said anything to that effect. Uh, One of his ministers did. One of the UP ministers came like out on record to say trouble. that the film would not be allowed to screen in Uttar Pradesh. Oh, I don't know. Um, but tell us, Mr. Kamalasan, for people who have solidly oh, backed you so over the last 72 uh, hours, they would wonder why is it that Kamal Hassan is buckling under pressure? Why is it that yes. he's not standing the ground and saying that, no, despite this pressure, I believe in what I have done and I will not make any changes? Why are you succumbing to the pressure of the mob, sir? You know, yeah, they, they, I'm, I'm very grateful for those who stood by me and thought uh, I'm a hero first and then I'm buckling under pressure. But you must understand, movie uh, are not essential commodities. It's not an essential service. If as the state realized or the court realized, if they truly believe that movie will make uh, um, uh, disharmony, it should be stopped. I'm open to that. I love my country more than cinema. It's just a movie. But it's not the case. I stood my ground, but then when it came to such uh, magnitude, I really wanted to look at it and say, what what's important? Uh, Disharmony and my my reputation of my state. We have never had Hindu Muslim rights of a large scale in Tamil Nadu. So for me, it was alarming. I mean, uh, it's not uh, right, and that's why I said, well, okay, come, okay, come and let me see what is it. Because I truly believe this film should be. Good. There is a sense of awe. They know, and um, there are Muslims in the sense of awe. That is when I call this cultural terrorism because tomorrow anything I could uh, I could uh, censor a uh, standing government and say it's a bad government. Mr. Kamal down. Hassan. And it's one group which is dissatisfied. One of the great the advocates of, the of free thinks. speech and a man who's run into a lot of trouble himself. Film director Mahesh Bhatt is joining us on this broadcast. We're going to get the both of you to speak live. Mr. Mahesh Bhatt, do you have a question? Oh. What do you have to say to Mr. Kamal Hassan? Well, I think the uh, um, nation needs to salute its national treasure, Kamal Hassan. is a man who has walked his talk. He has the courage to stand alone. And I see enormous dignity. Every port is being revealed the stuff he's made of. He indeed, undoubtedly, is an embodiment of secular India. I feel it is my duty on the behalf of my fraternity to reassure my friend, my brother, that the entire film industry rallies behind him. He has hit a curve, and when we look back, we will only thank him for two minutes for being the torch bearer and ushering a new age. Because I think he was destined. Yesterday was a day where the Mahatma fell to the bullet of intolerance. The politics of intolerance destroyed our Mahatma. But unfortunately we saw the politics of intolerance walk down even yesterday. It's time that people like Kamal and me and all of us and in fact every Indian looks at the bully in his eye and says, a big boo. We won't buckle down. But as Kamal has demonstrated that he believes in the politics of cooperation, not in the politics of confrontation. Those who see him reaching out to his Muslim brothers should not be free, but it's an act of timidity. It's an act of great courage. Because he says that if you feel that that by me taking one step back, you feel that I've accommodated you, and from there you can make a beginning, a new beginning. It should not be misconstrued as an accident. Boo to the bully. 
Don't buckle to the bully, say boo to him. Look him in the eye. Take him on. Amal, you are not alone. And I know you feel that. You feel that everybody is with you. Oh, I want Mr. Kamal Hassan to respond to what he's just heard Mahesh Bhatt say. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Mahesh, thank you for all that. Somebody told me yesterday he called you a, a treasure. So, from one treasure to another, thank you for standing by me. But I'm, uh, you're uh, a great filmmaker yourself. You've been in trouble, great trouble yourself. And uh, I'm, I'm touched and uh, we should more, meet more often. <laughs> and embolden ourselves more. And uh, thanks for making the, the step look in the right direction, even if it seemed like I was taking it backwards. It's it's all for love. My film was made for love. And uh, we do so many things. We do beautiful scenes, long scenes. So you would have done it. I would have done it. And then totally remove the scenes without anyone telling us that um, it is to be taken out of the film. I'm, I'm not making this film for my whim. I'm making it for a lot of people like you do. And uh, yes, uh, we can be strong, but even adamant, but we can't be cruel. And that I won't be. If I'm accused of cruelty, I'll step back. Okay, uh, Mr. Hassan, we've got done, film actress. And I, Kushbu also it. joining us on this broadcast from Chennai. She too would like to speak to you. Kushbu, go ahead, please. Um, sir, it's, um, it's really an honor to speak to you. Uh, I have known you for so many years. And uh, I have always looked up to you, uh, not as an actor, but more of a filmmaker for the kind of thoughts you have had. I have personally seen you the amount of hard work you put in into every film, whether you're directing or you're scripting or not. Even as an actor, I have seen you giving your input into the most important films of your career. And I have been lucky enough to be part of that. Um, it's very unfortunate to what has happened to you. Uh, I, I think as, as the fraternity of the same same uh, film industry, I think uh, it's, it's very hurting and uh, to an extent very shameful that you have to go through something like this. But uh, all I would like to say is you are not alone. We all stand by you because we believe in you. We all know that you are one man who could never ever hurt anybody. It's not only about religion or a community, but you would never hurt anyone. And uh, please continue to make good films. We all are looking forward to see the film. We have been hearing so much about it. And uh, we know, we believe in you, we trust you, that you will continue to make films which will people will actually wait to see, okay, this is the next Kamal Hassan film, so what are you going to give us next? And that anticipation, uh, Oh, and you, you have seen the amount of love not only from here, from us, but from the, all all over the country. The amount of love that has poured in for you, um, I think you rightly deserve it. Probably we've never had the opportunity to tell you that what you mean to us. But I think this was one place which brought all of us together under one roof to tell you. Okay. You, you are our treasure. You are our treasure. And at any cost, we will not lose you. You are the most important factor to keep us behind it. Mr. Hassan, I want Mr. Hassan to respond to what Kushbu is asking, especially on the aspect of whether this controversy will force a change in the manner in which you approach film, especially controversial subjects like religion. Will there be a change, sir? No, why should there be? Because uh, I, my idea is not to create controversy, to create thought, to create respect, dignity among my audience, I, even as they watch uh, the film. And to uh, Kushbuji, you were there yesterday over uh, 
many years for the sake of films i've hugged you many times in duets and songs but the hug you gave me yesterday with tears wetting my shoulder i will never forget that hug it's it's more than romance thank you and uh, most of my brothers uh, prabhu was there i mean if i name one and not name the others it'll be they all stood and they were there in my office attending on me as if i was unwell i, I was only sad but they wanted to know what i want what a, they said what can we do for you shall we go and meet the cm what do you want us to do and now i'm telling you uh, kushbu ji uh, i am releasing the film here in uh, north india tomorrow please wait i'll come back and we'll all sit together and watch the uh, showroom thank you glad that you've been able to speak uh, to kushbu directly mr kamal hasan uh, i have a couple of questions before we end this you've decided not to go to the supreme court do you really believe that uh, there will be an amicable resolution or do you think your film will be mutilated so much be chopped and chipped so much that it won't retain its essence uh, the original that kamal hasan wanted the world to see no yesterday they wanted uh, they sat with me all the muslim brothers came they all wanted to help they sat with me they it, very minor what they have suggested as a matter of fact um, another uh, um, uh, highly uh, uh, um, uh, mostly uh, muslim populated country like malaysia had censored it and there were very little cuts it's all aimed towards violence not about islam they didn't want violence in the film uh, so uh, i think uh, that's fine and uh, there won't be any cuts or damages to the film if it is then i'll have to take my stand because you can't mutilate a work of art because muslims know about art we've got and, uh, mr prakash raj joining us yes, mr prakash raj is with watch. us from chennai mr kamal hasan and he wants to speak to you as well go ahead mr prakash raj kamal hasan sir he can hear thank you sir you. please go on kamala hasan sir thank you for what you yes. are you have stood you are our treasure i know wounds are deeper than flesh and you are hurt but we all are with you because you have given a new platform for a secular mind and we are all with you because we think you're the best secular mind we have in this country and with whatever you are doing it's for the love of the people and uh, i'm 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 really proud of you and i i must i'm proud of you too uh, prakash ji because you were one of the first strong voices which came out and i'll never forget that you know i want <laughs> you know why i'm saying that Mr Kamal Hasan you threatened that you would consider leaving Tamil Nadu probably even leave India and go abroad uh, is that is that just an emotional outburst or do you fear that if this attitude of vindictiveness continues you'll actually be forced to leave the country sir yes if you do it to me again and again and again i will it's not a, a, a false threat i'm hurt but where will i go i can't stop thinking of india i can't stop thinking of my country uh, my land my people i'll work from outside many do that that's what i meant when i said i'll leave the country it doesn't mean i hate india i love indians the, the working atmosphere the my, my workshop uh, is cluttered with too many things but i'll work from outside if need be it's not a threat it's It's the only way I can work. I need to end this Where broadcast. Every day I will not be. Uh, But there is one caller, Jeevan. He is calling from Bangalore. He says he's seen yeah. this movie with a bunch of his Muslim friends. He insists he wishes to speak to you, Mr. Kamal Hasan, before we end. Yeah, go ahead, Jeevan. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, this is Jeevan from Bangalore. Yes. 
sir uh, my question is like uh, i have yes. watched this movie twice with my friends couple of my muslim friends hello yeah go ahead he can hear you okay yes. so couple of uh, with couple of my muslim friends and after the movie i checked with all of them if they have found any issues uh, related to their uh, custom religion whatever and absolutely they didn't have any problem and in fact just wanted to say that in bangalore i think around hardly four to six theaters they have released your movie and till sunday uh, we don't have a single ticket available i just wanted to know why only in tamil nadu uh, this protest is happening it is it will stop now and uh, as i say it is salam alaikum time for peace it is indeed time for peace what's the one message sir you want to leave people with they followed this controversy they've been concerned and worried for you to your fans and others who are watching this broadcast what's the message kamal hasan the superstar wants to leave them with love is the only medicine for the ailment this country is suffering from art could be way below in the ranks but even art with love would be a great combination and that's what i'm trying to do please watch me with the same love you came to me when i was in trouble don't wait for me to get in trouble watch a film let my speech be free let india be free i know i'm asking for freedom and with freedom i know i have responsibilities so i tell tell all communities all castes and creeds that i will bear that responsibility in mind mr so kamal hasan you're a true me. champion of free thought free speech and every right thinking indian is with you all the way we're proud of the fact that you've stood up to the mob you haven't blinked even though you've been under a lot of pressure you're being forced to make some compromises but you've sent out a clear message do this to me again and i will do a hussein i hope india does not disrespect this superstar mr kamal hasan for joining us live and for agreeing to take questions from your fans the viewers who are most keen on speaking to you thank you very much mr kamal hasan